what do you have to say for yourself? Well, it's not mine. I was holding it for somebody else. Who were you holding it for? You guys don't know him. Well, I'd like to know him. What's his phone number? Well, he just moved in. I don't even think he has a phone yet. <laughs> so, dude, you're getting inside. Come on. Hey, you guys were going out. That's what we wanted you to think. We were over in Wilson's yard hiding. Oh, so you set a trap for me? Well, that really shows you have a lot of trust in your child. <laughs> we catch you with drugs, and you want to talk about trust? Well, you raise a good point. <laughs> Sit. Look, I told you guys I was just holding it for somebody else. What do you think, we're a bunch of idiots? You want us to believe that you're all of a sudden in the marijuana storage business? <laughs> Is this your dope or not? The truth. All right, all right, it's mine. I came to pick it up after the basketball game and I was gonna take it to a party. Well, now you're a supplier. No, Dad, a lot of kids bring stuff. What is it, a potluck? <laughs> is this the only drug you're doing? Yes. How much are you smoking? I don't know, not that much. Once a week, once a month, what? Mom, I do it when I go to parties. It's just a way to kick back and mellow out every once in a while. I see. So you kick back and mellow out to your car, get behind the wheel and mellow yourself right into a telephone pole? I mean, you already managed to do that once straight. Or were you straight then? I don't get high and drive. You were going to drive tonight. You know what? Don't you guys think you're making a big deal out of this? If it wasn't a big deal, why were you hiding under the bench out there? Because I knew you'd freak. Well, why do you think I'd freak about it? Why do you think so? It's because what you're doing is illegal here. You know what, Dad? Don't you think you're being a little hypocritical? Well, why don't you explain that to me? I don't know. You were alive during the whole hippie thing. Are you telling me you never smoked weed? Don't turn this around. This is not about <laughs> us. This is about you. And, and, and you're grounded right now for, until we can figure out what to do about this. Now get up to your room. Fine. Fine. Believe that stuff. Pulls this and says, I'm a hypocrite. Well, he's right, at least about me. I used to smoke a lot of dope. You don't tell him about that. <laughs> It was a long time ago you were in college, and this stuff, I, they, they say it's stronger now. It was still illegal then. I mean, I should have talked to Brad about my no, experiences no, before. No. He would have benefited from my mistakes. You tell him that you smoke pot. It's like endorsing it. He doesn't need my endorsement. He's already doing it. Okay, okay. Tell him the truth about everything now. How about the first time we had sex, huh? Rusty's barn dance, bum 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 bum. Yeah. How about the time we both cheated on our SATs? I didn't cheat on my SATs. Oh, rub that in my face again. <laughs> Look, I just think that being honest with Brad is our best chance of, of getting him to stop doing drugs. I'm guessing you're not talking about Metamucil. <laughs> we, uh, we caught Brad with some marijuana. Wow. Wow. You smoke this stuff, too, don't you? No! <laughs> Is that a real no or a no? I don't want to be in trouble like Brad, no. It's a real no. Maybe you can trust him. <laughs> Yeah, it's me. Come in. Oh, man, are you in deep. <laughs> what, Mom and Dad tell you too? Yeah? How could you bring drugs into the house? I didn't bring them into the house. I take them to the swing outside. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know you smoked. I've only done it a couple times. I mean, come on, you've been to a ton of parties. Are you telling me you never smoked? No. Oh. The kids who are always smoking seem so out of it. I just never pictured myself sitting in the corner contemplating the meaning of string. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't do that. So what do you do? 
Why don't we just kind of sit around and talk about stuff? Like what? What do you care? I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with you. You know what's going on with me is that I'm grounded. Where's mom and dad? They're in their room talking. Good. Wait, where are you going? I'll make a phone call. What are you doing? Mom and dad told you to stay in your room. Just shut up. I know what I'm doing. You've certainly proven that. <laughs> Hey, Eric. Yeah, it's Brad. No, 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 I can't take you to that party. Yeah, I kind of got busted by my parents. Yeah, I won't be smoking pot for a while. For a while? Yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> so, you're just gonna wait till we get off your back and start smoking again? Brad, sit down, please. Guys, come on. I mean, it's not like I'm doing hard drugs. You don't have to do hard drugs to screw up your life. Yep. And we know that from experience. So, so you were potheads. No. I was a beer head. <laughs> but I was. You were friends with a girl who smoked a lot of pot, and she got busted and ended up going to jail. Her family wouldn't talk to her. So, as I recall, her boyfriend had to bail her out. God knows what happened if he weren't around. The guy was a saint. <laughs> was that a story about you? No. Yes. No. Yes, it was. And it's not the whole story. I, I would... <laughs> I got stoned at a Led Zeppelin concert. I bought some dope that was laced with something. What was it laced with? I don't know. But I ended up in the emergency room that registered under the name Charlene Fogelman. <laughs> so you used a phony name so your parents wouldn't catch you? No, I thought I was. <laughs> Charlene Then how'd you end up in jail? Somebody turned me in. I was messed up for a long time after that. She still hyperventilates every time she hears Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> well, who doesn't? Look, Brad, I know what this is like. You know, when you're young, you don't want to have adventures. You think nothing bad can happen to me. It's just not true. Something bad can happen to you. Why would you want to take that risk? Um, your, your life's, you know, track now. You don't want to do stuff that will get it off track. You know, you get, you get so much going for you. You got so much to lose. I mean, it, it, how about your soccer scholarship? And the trust of a family who loves you. I don't want to lose my soccer scholarship. <laughs> or, or the other thing. The other thing is the most important thing in your life. Nobody believes or cares in you as much as we do. I know that. So, what now? What are you going to do next time you go to a party? Which, by the way, will be a very long time for me. If someone wants you to smoke some pot, what are you going to do? Yeah. I'll just say no thanks. Oh, come on, just to tell. Come on, Brad, what's the yeah, matter? Come I on, just, take, just... I won't take it. What are you going to tell them when, when they ask why not? I don't know. I mean, I guess I'll just make up some kind of excuse. Here's what they tell us to use at the counseling center. Tell them that you can't smoke because if you get caught again, your parents are going to put you on drug testing. Well, do you think my friends are really going to buy that? You convince them. Because it'll be true. <laughs> OK, I get the picture. Good. Now this sensitive, emotional moment's over. <laughs> now I want you to go back to your room, and I'll talk to you tomorrow after 10 o'clock. What then? Sentencing. 
<laughs> All right, I'm sorry. All right. Do you think we got through to him? I don't know. I hope so. Because so we can reason with him and tell him horror stories all we want, but when he goes out that door, it's going to be all up to him. He's a good kid, though. Yeah, I think so. God. <sighs> Do you remember when the worst problem that we had with Brad was toilet training? <laughs> <laughs> well, makes sense. Couldn't get him on the pot, now we're trying to get him off the pot. <laughs> oh, what a miserable day. Telling me. First thing you know, you're crashing through a gazebo. <laughs> you say, no, your oldest son is on drugs. Boy, I need a beer. <laughs> So Brad's not going to be driving or going to parties for two months. We went easy on him because he was the first one to get caught. However, the next one gets the book thrown at him. That's not fair. Well, no one said life was fair. You have the benefit of learning from Brad's mistake. Hmm. You know, in some cultures, it's a kid who screwed up who's expected to learn from his mistake. <laughs> well, this isn't a fancy country like France. <laughs> This is America, where one person can screw it up for everybody. 